One day, while deep in meditation, Tanma, an apprentice to the great wizard Merlin, heard the voice of a princess crying for help. This princess is destined to be his future bride, so... Yeah, that's a good enough reason for him to be concerned. Using the magic powers he learned from Merlin, Tanma sets off on a journey to save his love. Legend of Hero Tanma is an arcade side-scrolling action game released by IREM in 1989. A couple years later, it was ported to the PC Engine in Japan, making its way to the American Turbo Graphics a couple of years after that. It's an extremely late release, and considered quite rare in America, so, as with Dynastic Hero, we better grab a glove here. Uh, we better use two gloves. At the title screen, the opening theme for the game is a bit weak, which is a tad worrisome. In this turbo chip, you play as Tanma, although the game calls him Tommy, so <laughs> let's stick with that one. He has pretty typical platforming controls with a simple shot utilizing button 2 and a variable jump with button 1. You can float down from these jumps by holding up on the control pad. Floating and shooting come in handy as well here, so turbo switch up. Let's not forget you can also jump down from some platforms. Tommy will traverse through a handful of different stages, including ruins, a forest, a dungeon, and more. While doing so, he will mow down various enemies who either run toward him, jump around the screen, uh, stop it or shoot at him I, I should stop it these enemies respawn quite often and quite fast luckily you can Mario bounce off their noggins for an additional attack or to help with some height restrictions Tommy also has to locate keys scattered around a stage which are mostly just sitting out in plain sight <laughs> to open doors and progress Collecting P icons will increase your shot power up to a few levels. You can also add special bombs into the mix, which can reach high places and even hone shots onto enemies. You can also collect icons that turn enemies into coins, give Tommy a protective barrier, or maybe an extra life. And some icons even destroy the floors. <laughs> yeah, you better know that one is coming. Treasure chests hold a small explosion of coins, which are really fun to collect for some reason. I wish there were more of these around. There are also treasure bags abound. Since you get extra lives at certain point values, you definitely want to collect all that you can. Many stages follow a simple horizontal design, but there are some expansive areas that allow you to climb. With that said, you can also skip some of the stage if you're clever enough. There is a boss at the end of each stage. After you defeat the boss, you get a quick cutscene before moving on and, well, the text is hilarious. Young man, you, you better go back here. You must regret it later. <laughs> I just love that. The graphics definitely have some nice color. The detail is a bit lacking here, and it could use some more dimension to break up its flat look. But it still is very pleasing with some nicely designed bosses and enemies. It also is a pretty darn good port of the arcade looks-wise. The music within the game is a mixed bag. It won't help you with the experience much, but it's definitely better than the title screen would lead one to believe. The sound effects do their job pretty well and give the game its arcadey feel. This turbo chip overall is very speedy and luckily the controls are one of its strongest attributes. The jumps are swift, the shots are fast, and Tommy moves around with ease. 
Aside from a little bit of slowdown, I can't say that I have much to complain about in the control department as the gameplay is pretty solid. Sadly, Tommy can only take one hit before dying, which can be tricky. When you lose a life, you are stripped of power-ups and sent back to the checkpoint, if there is one. Some stages don't have them, so sadly, these force you to start at the beginning. In fact, the final full stage has no checkpoint. When all lives are lost, you can continue or hit end. If you continue, it acts just like a life lost and will start you at a checkpoint again if there is one. So you basically have unlimited chances to get through the game. A lot of people consider Legend of Hero Tanma to be very, very hard. While it's not the easiest action game on the planet, I wouldn't say it's the most difficult either. You definitely have to learn the stages, enemies, and bosses, but once you do, it's a less than 20 minute excursion. Oftentimes you can tank a boss if you're nicely powered up. If you are not, it'll take some good old fashioned dodging. The final boss is a perfect example of this. My first time there I was powered up, but I died and had to defeat him with only my pea shooter. It took me a good number of tries, but damn it, I did it. Take your time and don't rush. There is no time limit like in the arcade version. You can even snipe enemies from afar before moving on. There are some bottomless pits and the platforming can be a bit tricky, but again, it's not horrible. At the title screen, you can select a sound mode, which is fun if you want to scroll through the various music. You can also select multiple players who will alternate plays through the game. And that is Legend of Hero Tonma. It has a weird balance and a number of flaws, but it's definitely a fun little game and a fun little romp. Ha! One credit clear. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else really cares, right? <laughs> I have a problem. Legend of Hero Tanma is a pretty good arcade translation of a pretty good little action game. Of course, I can't recommend you go out and spend the money on it, but while it's a short experience once you have it mastered, it's quite a fun time, so if you can track it down, give it a shot. If you don't, ladies and gentlemen, you must regret it later. 